Hello, everybody. It's Philly Cuts with Comic Book Hall number 18. Number 18. It's new comic book release day. It's a big week for comics. January 14th, 2015. Second comic book haul of the year. But I want to call it more than just comic book haul. The title of this one's going to be A New Hope. That's why. We'll get back to that. Star Wars goes back to Marvel. I need you to help me name my comic book haul video. Now, people have been submitting names. Uh, nothing has caught my fancy yet, guys. So keep trying. Leave it in the comment section below. And if I pick someone's uh, name for my comic book haul videos, weekly videos every Wednesday, I'll give you a copy of Hellraiser, The Road Below. This is a one-shot story, graphic novel, retails for 15 bucks. Kirsty Cotton has become a Cenobite, and she goes on her first mission. And boy, oh boy, does she have problems. And she needs to be counseled by, a, if you're familiar with Hellraiser, that's Ms. Female Cenobite there, the baldy. The baldy without the pins. All right. Big, big release today. Marvel Comics, the biggest comic book release in 20 years, 20 years, this comic book has already sold, according to, if you're going by direct sales, which means how many retailers and comic book shops, how many issues they order, this has gone uh, up to a million copies already. And that is Star Wars number one, people. It goes back to Marvel. Back to Marvel. Now, the last time Marvel had this series was from 77 to 86 okay what was going on then in that comic book series it was the events taking place after star wars and in between the empire strikes back this comic book is going to do the same this series i guess they're going to explore that era now you might say well dark horse something for like the last 20 years dark horse comics has had uh, Star Wars properties and Star Wars stories. Well, according to Forbes magazine, I'm reading Forbes magazine right here. Uh, it is saying that Marvel and Disney and the Lucas Story Group, keepers of the holocron, lord of all Star Wars continuity, said that all this stuff that happened in, in Dark Horse Comics... Uh, the expanded universe of Star Wars and stuff, that's all legend and myth and mythology, and that's, like, not really what's been happening. This is the new storyline. I don't know how you guys feel about that. It sounds like a console war, but in comics, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but this is, I cannot believe, one million copies already. Now, 20 years ago, can anybody think of, right now, what that comic was? That sold a million copies. Do, 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 do. It was Batman number 500. And that was the storyline, the second round of the Nightfall storyline. This is all according to Forbes magazine. Uh, where Batman's back is broken by Bane. And Jean Paul Valley takes over for the Dark Knight. So that was like 20 years ago. 20 years ago, so it has been a long freaking time. So this is the, the biggest selling comic in the last 20 years, day one, at least going by retail orders. Now, the other issue with this, and I'm looking at another article that says that there are over 100, okay, 100 variant covers for Star Wars number one. Can you believe that? That's got to be a record. I don't know for sure. I couldn't find any article stating that that was the record. But I can't imagine any other comic that has ever had 100 variant covers, okay? I was at my comic book shop today. They had about seven or eight different ones. One of the covers that they had was an Alex Ross uh, pencil sketch cover. You want to guess how much it was selling for? Take a guess. They had it for $100, Ninety nine, ninety nine, and then they had another variant cover. I can't uh, think of the the name of it. It was selling for seventy. 
they had another variant cover that I was looking at, considering buying. I was this close. It had a, a Luke Skywalker 1977 style old school action figure. Like the cover was like it was the package. And if you remember how those looked, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I was this close to buying it, but they jacked up the price two dollars to six ninety nine. And I was like, ah. Part of me said maybe I'll get this one and that one, but then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stick with the old one. Or the regular old one that just shows the, the cast and crew of the New Hope on there. Uh, I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, you know, I you know that, uh, I don't mind that there's variant covers. You know, some people get really upset about that, and that's a whole other issue in and of itself. What drives variant covers, obviously, is sales. And other people say that, well, it preys upon people's OCD. You know, comic collectors have OCD and they need to get every variant cover. Hey, look, it's a choice, you know. You don't have to do it. And you could tell yourself, you know, no, I don't need to get that cover. I will not. I don't need to get every variant cover. And if you do, hey, that's okay. As long as you're not going broke, you pay your bills, whatever, whatever suits you. So I don't really have a big problem with it. But I was just surprised. I was just surprised. And uh, it's a boundary that I've set with myself that I'm not going to buy multiple covers of the same issue. You know, I just, it's just a boundary uh, that I've set with myself. And it does get tested uh, on some weeks. And this week was one of them. So I'm not really, I'm not going to give away any spoilers. But all I'm going to say is that all your familiar characters are in this. There's Harrison Ford, they're all drawn up like the actors that you're familiar with, you know, C-3PO, Chewie, uh, R2-D2, they're all in here, Princess Leia, Darth Vader, uh, I don't know, you guys let me know what you think, did you get Star Wars number one, this first issue is five bucks, it's bigger than a normal issue, I want to say it's close to a double issue, but they got a shitload of ads in here, and there's some new series coming out along with it. I don't know if they're mini series, but in here they already have advertisements for Princess Leia, number one. And then there's also going to be a series Darth Vader, which I may bite on. That might be interesting. I would like to enter into the Lord of Vader Chronicles. All right, so that's the big news out of Marvel. Now, last week, <coughs> last week I bought. A trade. I bought Sinestro. Now I gotta say, man, I really liked it. I really liked Sinestro. This uh, compiled issues one through five, and then it also had Green Lantern. I think twenty three point four or something. Yeah, twenty three point four and Sinestro's Future End. The one shots that came out about four months ago. Future's End number one. Sinestro's Future End number one. I really enjoyed it. I'm not really gonna get into. To, too much detail about it or elaborate because I want to keep it rolling on current issues. But <sighs> the danger, right? I'm just talking about variant comics and I'm not going to buy multiple variants. Well, we all know that the danger is when you start to get into a new universe, right? You want to buy the uh, other surrounding comics that are associated with it. And obviously Sinestro, who's leader of the Sinestro Corps, the Yellow Lanterns, it's... His arch nemesis is the Green Lantern, right? Hal Jordan. And I don't know much about Green Lantern. I didn't even know much about Sinestro. Uh, I was just kind of attracted to the artwork in here. And I was uh, attracted to the coloring and stuff in here. And I read it and I really, really liked it. He's an interesting character, an interesting type, complicated. Colin Bunn did a really good job. This guy kind of rules and operates through fear. And he's like fear monger. He's like a despot. But he also has like these honor, this honorable side to him as well. He wants to save his people, the Corrigans, the remaining members of the people. And, uh, so that made me bite and say, well, I might start to buy Green Lantern. So now, but here's what swayed my decision big time, okay? DC is closing down 13 titles by March, okay? Uh, because there's this big event coming, right? 
It's called DC's Convergence. I'm looking at IGN. I didn't know about this. So I guess in April and May, DC is like stopping uh, all the series. Like they're going to go on pause. And then some of them are going to be gone completely. So here's, here's what it is. Now bear with me. I'm going to read this so I get this straight. All right. I know I'm doing a lot of reading this one. But Convergence is going to be a nine-part event miniseries written by Jeff King with interior art by uh, Carlo Paglion and Jason Paz. The story sees Brainiac collecting cities of doomed and forgotten worlds on a planet called Thelios, where the inhabitants will battle to the death as part of a grand experiment. That's what it is. But they're going to have... The remaining, so DC is going to hack. You following me? DC's cutting off 13 titles by March. Gone. That's it. They're stopping, at least until they reboot again, because, you know, some of them will always reboot. And I'm going to read you the list. And then there's going to be 40, the remaining titles that are left, there's going to be 40 or 39 series left, and they're going to have two issue mini series. Related to how this convergence event is affecting their world. I mean, Jesus Christ. Maybe this is why people get so pissed off at DC. You know, a lot of people are pissed off about the, the reboot still, the new 52. And then they're doing something like this. So holy fucking tie-in and crossover city that's going to be. It sounds like it's going to be a mess. But now back to Green Lantern. Here's why. I decided to start buying Green Lantern because the 13 titles, of the 13 titles that they're canceling, a lot of them are Green Lantern related titles. And that was what I was worried about when I picked Sinestro up. I was like, holy shit, you know, because I go to the comic book store and I see how many different Green Lantern titles there are. So here, here are some of the titles that are getting cut on the, on before March, right? Or by March. Secret Origins, Star Spangled War Stories featuring G.I. Zombie. I never even heard of that one. Green Lantern Corpse. <coughs> Green Lantern New Guardians. <coughs> Red Lantern. <coughs> That's what made me decide, okay, well now maybe I can handle it. Because I'm going to add Sinestro to my pull list. I decided that. And then I was like, I got to freaking do Green Lantern then. And this kind of sealed the deal. Because those other three green... So I was like, you know, the tie-in potential and crossover potential has been greatly reduced, at least I think. So that factored in. Here are the remaining other titles, and then we'll move on. Aquaman and others. Clarion. Trinity of Sin, which, like, just started. Ark of Manor, which I'm very surprised about. Batwoman. And Swamp Thing. I can't believe it, Batwoman. Now, I know that a lot of people were pretty pissed off about Batwoman after they changed the writers. And, uh, you know, there were, there were some people that just weren't very happy. They are like, what is this? Isn't the Batman I fell in love with? This is just like, seems like it's a Batwoman who's just familiar with taking selfies and popularity. Like, what the f*** is going on here? And then Swamp Thing. Good Lord. I, I thought Swamp Thing had a real faithful <coughs> following. So what the heck happened there? So big things coming for DC. Now, I decided to pick up a Green Lantern trade. Sinestro. And this is talking about... Uh, it's, the, it's the start, the reboot of Green Lantern. New 52 collects issues number 1 through 6. Okay? Hal Jordan is a washed-out pilot, considered too unstable to be allowed to a plane. Now Hal is being given the chance to soar one more time by joining the Intergalactic Green Lantern Corps, the most powerful peacekeepers in the cosmos. There's just one catch. The Green Lantern ring is coming from Sinestro. And Sinestro is a Green Lantern, which we originally was. I guess in this storyline, he's been reinstated into the Green Lanterns, so... I don't know. I'm looking forward to it, learning a little bit more about Hal Jordan and more of this Lantern universe. So like I said, I'm a rookie. Uh, if anybody suggests good Green Lantern, but especially good Green Lantern comics or issues with Sinestro in them, I'm all ears because I'm ready to buy some back issues, especially with Sinestro. That might be like my niche 
when buy when buying earlier volumes of Green Lantern, uh, looking for the Sinestro issues. Cause damn, dude, I really like Sinestro, man. I love him. All right, another loose end, very quickly. The comic book uh, cover of the month or cover of the week, rather. I forgot to tell you guys, and it was Spider Verse. The uh, part four, the Amazing Spider-Man number twelve, the Inheritor family portrait. That was the cover of the week that I forgot to tell you guys about. All right, onward. I also picked up Green Lantern number thirty-eight. Came new issue after the Godhead storyline. That was a big, big, crazy ass crossover. All those Green Lantern titles I just mentioned. It was some crazy. I don't know. Probably like in the teens part story. It had like four acts, part five. I mean, it might have been even more. Anyway, Green Lantern needs some R&R after that. And he just wants to go back home to Earth and get a beer, okay? And that's what this issue is about. He wants to go home. He wants to have some fun, blow off some steam. But then he's got Red Lanterns, who uh, I'm not sure what Red Lantern that is, trying to prevent him from going back because I guess Red Lantern, uh, Earth is Red Lantern territory. So I'm really, you know, looking forward to that. So I'm going to start banging out the back trades on Green Lantern probably and then buy this and Sinestro from here forward. All right, that's it with the big guys. Now we're moving into some more independent titles. I got Ghosted. What is this, number 16? This is the start of a new story arc. Uh, it's a big wedding, and as you can see from the title, Bloody Cutting. One of my favorite writers is uh, on this, Joshua Williamson. He's also doing the Predator part, I think, of Alien vs. Predator. He's got Birthright, Robocop, Nailbiter. This guy's got a lot of good stuff, man. I'm putting him up there with Scott Snyder for my favorite writers. Uh, but the star of this, when I was leafing through this, was really the artwork, and it's Juan Jose Rip. And he's it's just got such a unique look. It's got like a real textured look, like the lines in there. So basically, this is like a wedding, I think, of a family feud, of a family that's been feuding for quite a while. And it just delves into freaking chaos. Delves into freaking chaos. And uh, it's a huge, huge fight. And they're saying that this is the biggest fight so far in the Ghosted series. And I got to love, too. It looks like there's some sort of satanic rituals going on in here. I mean, this is just, you know. You guys know I love horror, so that's a hint, man. Maybe that there's a little hint to help you name my series. I mean, we'll keep this going. I appreciate everybody so far that's named, you know, tried to name it so far. But think, you know, horror comics are big. That's something I like. So maybe you can incorporate something in there. That might, that might hook me, people. Hexed, number six, Boom Comics. Basically, they're rounding up artifacts, okay? Lucifer, main character, she's a, she's a chick. I love her, though. She's so witty, smart, sexy, badass. She's rounding up all the artifacts that got burned down uh, in the museum. Her boss is named Val. This museum that housed special artifacts of the occult got burned down. There's this other female character, Lady Cymbeline, who's the bad guy. She's trying to round up all those artifacts as well. This is, uh, this is a good series. It's illustrated by Dan Mora. Michael Allen Nelson is the creator and the writer. Uh, colors are Gabriel Casada. I think he's been there since the beginning. You get good, great ghoulies and ghosties in here. It's got kind of like a real cartoony kind of look to it, but I really enjoy the coloring. And I'm enjoying the characters. There's an intern that's hooked up with Lucifer, uh, Rayana, and she uh, recently discovered that she's a necromancer, so she's learning how to deal with those new powers. So it's just, it's just really, really cool. It's kind of lighthearted. It's kind of like snappy writing, jokey writing, and I like it. It's kind of like, it reminds me of Harley Quinn a little bit. You know, it's like some of my lighthearted comics. Sticking with Boom, we got Wild's End, number five of six in this series. 
It's coming to a close. This is my anthropomorphic animal series. War of the Worlds meets, like, Babar the Elephant. These aliens have been tailing this crew of characters since the beginning. They get invaded, but you're not really sure by how many of the aliens, how many of these things have landed. And in this issue, they face one of the biggest ones. Yeah, I know. It looks like a funky freaking light pole, right? With tentacles on it. Looks like a lamp, right? But the writing in this is really snappy. Uh, the main character, I forget his name. He's like a boxer. The dog, like literally like a boxer. He's, uh, was in the war. I think it was World War II. This is around World War II. It's in the 40s. And he's dealing maybe with some like PTSD issues. Uh, he, w one of the characters they meet is a, a cat woman right here. She's like a recluse. She's a writer. But she also has a drinking problem. So I kind of like how they like put that in there. And there's some cool interplay between the characters. Like the town folk really know each other. You know, it seems like it's a small town. And everybody kind of knows everybody's business. And, and I just really like it. Sad to see this end. So this should be a good issue. There should be a lot more action in it. And, and right when you open up the second page, you got some battling going on between them and the creatures and it's just really cool it's kind of like ordinary people right rising up to the challenge sink or swim people alien vs predator number four this is almost coming to a close finally this is 16 issues people over four different titles i've been saying it since i've started my comic book haul this has been with me i think since i've started practically the comic book haul this is just chaos and melee in this issue, all right? It's basically on the cover there, that's a, um, it's like a cyborg, right? That took this stuff called the, an accelerant and it mutes, it mutes things. The predators have taken it, the predators turn into big berserkers, uh, humans have taken it, turned them into like crossbreed type things. That was a black dude that took it, and he got all hulked out. Hulked out Predator over there. Basically, this is like a, a in this issue, it's like a melee. It's like a, a free-for-all. Lots of lots of fighting. The aliens creep in and become involved. And so it's just lots of lots of chaos. To be honest, out of the four different titles, so there was Alien vs. Predator, Aliens, Prometheus, and Predator, okay? This was probably my least favorite one. I didn't really form any connections with anyone in this. Uh, it just seemed really tacked on. I didn't get too into it. Uh, my favorite ones were uh, Prometheus and then Predator, and that was because I liked the writers. Uh, the ones that did Prometheus were uh, Juan Ferreira was the artist, and I think it was Paul Tobin, and they also do Colder the Bad Seed. They're teamed up on that title, which I really love. I highly recommend to you, especially if you're into horror stuff. So I really like that team, and I, and I thought that Juan Ferreira, I love his artwork, man. I mean, if you don't know who he is, look him up. He's great. And then, of course, Joshua Williamson, he writes good stories. But the Predator part of this, the Predator title, it was like a weird buddy story, right? It's a human being, a human, pairs up with a predator, and uh, yeah, it's like an odd couple pairing. They have to kind of work together to survive, and I really like that angle, so I'm looking forward to that. Next week, I think that comes out, and then the week after that, there's Prometheus Omega, and then this finally ends, man. And then I'm and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna read this in the order that it should be read. Watch my previous comic book hauls and then you'll know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. And I know if everyone else has been watching me since the beginning, they must be sick of me saying it. So my Magnoliaverse title, Abe Sapien number nineteen. Just started reading this one. I started at eighteen. Basically, uh, from what I gather, Abe Sapien has been separated from the rest of the BPRD crew. Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense. He's a member of it. Although I'm not even sure if he's a member of it anymore, but he's separated from them. 
and he saved this girl from trouble. And I guess this girl was involved in a cult. So now he's kind of entrenched in that. They're going down on the border of the Gulf of Mexico or somewhere in the, in the Gulf of Mexico. I think it was in New Mexico, the state specifically. But that isn't in the Gulf of Mexico, is it? I'm thinking of the geography. I don't know. He's somewhere down in the southwest, man. And uh, you got Dave Stewart doing the coloring. You always got to mention Dave Stewart because he's such an integral part of the Magnolia universe. And if you're like, who the fuck is Abe Sapien? He's the fish dude. He's the fish guy. And if you watched Hellboy like I told you to or I asked you to last week, you'll know who I'm talking about. Abe Sapien. He's kind of like a geeky weirdo like me, but a lot thinner and smarter. <laughs> but... I enjoyed the issue I got. I'm going to stick with this. He runs in. I guess Abe Sapien runs into an old baddie. Maybe that's a little spoiler alert. Gets into a fight. This guy causes a lot of destruction. Kills some people. I don't even know if it kills one of Abe's friends, but somebody gets their head sliced off. And look at that. Great Jaws white shark chomp out of the side of her, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Told you I was weird. All right. Cover of the week. Let's see, people. Uh, where is it? Where the hell is it? Cover of the week. You knew I was going to go with this. The return of Star Wars, baby. Let me know which of your covers, because I know there were over a hundred. They have covers everywhere. There's no way you're going to get them all. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. Retail exclusive covers. Those freaking loot boxes or whatever that people order on the internet. They're getting their own cover. Comic book stores are getting their own cover. Comic book stores in the UK. Certain ones are getting their own cover in Canada. It's ridiculous, dude. It's ridiculous. I'm looking at this article right now. It is crazy. So let me know what you think of that. Help me name my freaking comic book show. And, uh, you know, if you made it this far, I probably should have said this in the beginning. People have been complaining sometimes that my comic book hauls are too long. Well, this is my style, man. Unscripted. Don't really have a script, but I do have things to talk about. And I'm not the type of person that just does the hauls like a lot of people where it's just like, okay, I got Star Wars number one. Then I picked up this Hellraiser trade. And that's just not me. I like to talk about some of the things. And I like to talk about issues and stuff and maybe problems we have with collecting. And uh, most of all, I want to hear from you guys as well. So maybe let me know what issues you got, what issues you're looking forward to. And uh, I don't know. Oh, and oh, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it. And if I did, I'm sorry. They gave us free pins at the comic book shop. That's the pin that I got for getting Star Wars number one. They had other ones. They had like Darth Vader, which they were out of. And I think Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. But all they had left was this one. Or Princess Leia ones. So I decided to go with the crew. So I hope you got your pin and I hope your comic book shop was giving that away. Maybe I'll add that to the giveaway. I don't know. All right, guys. Peace. And I'll see you next Wednesday on the longest comic book haul show on the internet. All right, guys. Peace. Have a good night, all right? <laughs>